This is the original image. What I'll do here is saturate the color a little more and bring it to a warmer tone. Then I will use a 5 by 5 inch grid since the canvas I will be using is 15 by 20 inches in size. Then save the image. I'll also make a copy in black and white. Then save it with the same grid. Because with my style, I will paint black first, then add the color. So here you will see that I have already sketched what I will be painting. Then the printed image also has grid lines. Same as with the canvas that also has grid lines. So the stencil is always aligned. So I started the painting in black and white first. The purpose of this is for me to focus more on the details of what I am copying. Not to be fast or something. This is more work than if you mixed the colors at once, but I prefer one process at a time. That's all about it. What you are seeing here is a piece of plastic that came from a plastic folder. I punched several holes using a needle. When you spray on it, it will have dots, so it will be like the pores of the skin. If you are just beginning to practice the airbrush, my advice to you is to practice it first freehand so you will learn to control it faster. If you already know how to control the airbrush, you can use any stencil to be an added tool to help you achieve what you want to achieve. It's a disadvantage for you if you treat the stencil as a necessity. As if you will not be able to get the thing you want because you don't have a particular stencil. If that is the case, you are limiting yourself. I am not saying this to put pressure on you or force anyone to do everything just by airbrushing. I am telling you this to encourage you to persevere in learning the airbrush so that when you've mastered it, when you use any tool, it will enhance your work. So you won't say I won't be able to do this or that because I don't have a skin stencil, don't have fire, or a skull, etc. But, if you don't have a plan to be flexible and it is more convenient for you to use a stencil, there's no argument with that. In the end, what matters is the quality of the finished product. This part is a good example. Although I am using a stencil for the skin textures, I also do freehand for the other parts to copy the actual shape of the textures from the reference. Then an eraser for the highlights and textures. I know you will ask me how come I can erase the paint. The answer is, because I am using a Sintra board. And a Sintra board is made of plastic material, so it really is possible to scrape the paint. And the paint I am using is designed to not dry quickly. And that is just the explanation. So here I am just doing the same things. I am doing it freehand and also using a stencil interchangeably. So when I am done with the black paint, I will do the coloring next. In other words, I am finishing the painting part by part. Then I will just repeat the process for the other parts until I finish everything. So how do I mix paint? I already have a detailed video for this, I taught the full process in that video. Then it has the following video for beginners after that. Just click the link that will show up. See the arrow, and I will also put the link in the description of this video. Here I use a fine line brush for the hair. 
I chose a fine line brush because the random shapes of the hair are so complicated. Why not pencil? Because the hair is black, if I used a pencil it would just be gray. The value should be correct. Even on the other parts of the eyebrows, I used the fine line brush, but I just reduced the paint to at least control the blackness. But later I will come back and use a pencil because there are some fine gray hairs. Here I started with a pencil instead, but later I will also use a stencil and brush. It depends on what I think is the fastest method. Of course, you can just choose either a pencil or a stencil. But why choose between them if you can use both to be more effective? In making an artwork, the most important thing is the finished product. It is the one that will carry your name, the one they will pay not the process in other words even if you choose the hardest method if the result is ugly no one will patronize your product here observe how i use a stencil the spray will just be subtle. I just need a guide to get the right position of the shapes and the proportion of any part. Then I will use freehand or use other tools. Everything on the face is just the same process. Let's just fast forward the video a little more for the parts where I can share some info. Now to the lips. After the stencil, I now have the guide of the shape. I am now using a pencil to map the textures, especially on the lower lip, so I know where the highlights and the texture are. As a result, I'll focus solely on controlling the airbrush. And because the textures have already been sketched, I can be more focused on copying the values. I will no longer think about the position where I will point the airbrush to get the right locations for every texture. Isn't this much better? When the black value is okay, the next thing I'll do is color. It's going to be just like a coloring book at this point. If some parts need to be darkened, I will just switch back to the black paint. It's just used interchangeably. And then while I am doing the layering of color, I also put the highlights in at the same time by using an eraser. Because if I do it last, the effect is unnatural. The highlights will look sharp and then the surrounding parts will be blurry. In realism, it's better that we copy how the image is being captured. Where the lens is focused, that's where the details are well defined and those that are not in the lens focus are the more blurry ones. These tiny details will add further realism to the painting. So don't just erase because it's the highlights. 
The effect will be that the painting will look flat with no depth. Sometimes it's really awkward to see when the strands of the hair are blurry, but the highlights are crisp and sharp. I'm also guilty, but if possible and if I can, I will copy what I see. But the solution to that is to work in layers. Don't exchange the quality for the speed. We can be fast as long as we don't compromise quality. Speed alone is not an issue. So let's go back here to our painting. Same process on the lips, on the mustache and beard. Pencil first to get every strand. Patience is needed here to not overdo the amount of hair. Especially in this image where you can almost count the hair on the part of the mustache. This is also one way for you to know the attitude of the artist who made a particular painting or how skilled the artist is. When it comes to the small details, they are often neglected, and we don't consider the closest amount of details, we just make them look similar. But if someone like me sees it, they'll know if you've gotten lazy. After I map the strands of hair, I will spray the skin color first and also add some textures. So on this part, the color comes first. Why? So I could bring out the white hair when I scratch the color. Did you get it? I hope so. I will just freehand paint here. This part doesn't have to be freehand. But I'll just use the opportunity to practice so that I don't get rusty. Later, I will also use a fine line brush and pencil on this part and also use the scratching method. Here I use a stencil for the hair and not a brush, so I can paint the clump of hair exactly where it is located. A fine line brush will not be a good choice, it can only paint thinly. I will have to do several strokes to finish. For the mustache and the beard, it's just a repetition of the process. Use the scratch and erase technique for the highlights and a pencil or fine line brush for the strands. I'll do whatever I think is best. So let's fast forward faster to the parts where I can share something. Here I use blue carbon paper to trace the fabric. Why not use a stencil? because I will do this freehand, then scratch and erase to get the textures, because the clothing doesn't have any sharp edges. The freehand is perfect for this job for soft or feathered and blurry effects. So I'm just doing freehand here using black paint. Later, the blue color will be added. This part is fairly easy. You can just watch this section and maybe learn something. The sewing and the thread are freehand. But for some other parts, I use an eraser and also a hobby knife for scratching. So let's play faster to the part where I may add additional information. So here, I made a stencil for the skin textures. So I just did it by manual cutting. I have a cutting machine, 
But I would like you to see that you don't need a machine to make this. Then I just use the pinch hole stencil for the small dots. But I still do freehand, they are just interchanging. Here I also added another perforated stencil that is finer and closer together. I just matched it with the reference. I can use this again. Maybe this will last for about a decade for me. So I will just give you an example of what it looks like when you spray over it. So here, freehand for other details. So my process is the same, black and white first, do the detailing, and after that I will lay the colors. I can still add black at the end, depending on what I see. The skin texture I am copying has a direction, so I am just copying the angle on the stencil. You can see that I am constantly changing the angle at which I hold the stencil. The process is just repeated until it's done. The last part is the hair. Let's just fast forward more. The one I am using is the thin plastic from the folder. The other one is from an old clear book. This one is thicker by about 5 to 6 times, and it's harder to cut. It's tough, but you can't make a skin texture and punch tiny holes in this. The needle will surely bend and you will hurt your fingers if you try to cut this. The thin one is just right. It's easier to make. It will still last for a long time. By the time it is broken, it has served its purpose more than enough. So for the blurry parts of the hair, it will be just freehand. So the image is more focused on the face. The pores are visible. The hair is a little blurry in the back part. If you want to see the detailed airbrushing of the hair using these tools, you may click the link that will appear. You will see the real-time process there. For the hair, I don't have anything new to teach you here. I finished the lessons in the previous videos, every process that I use and demonstrate is complete. From here, we can just play the video faster until the end. By the way, just go back to my recent videos, and those are the hair tutorials. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new, even though I have already taught you all of what I showed you here. Except for the stencils I made for the skin texture. So I'll see you again in my next video. Bye for now. Salute.